Good morning, I am Venice Bautista and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Today is Monday, August 2, 2021, and here are the stories of the hour. Metro Manila residents and those in nearby provinces who are barred from stepping out of the NCR Plus bubble starting Sunday or a week before the implementation of the government's strictest lockdown classification amid the threat of the highly contagious COVID-19 Delta variant. Interior <laughs> discouraged individuals residing in Metro Manila, Bulacan, Rizal, Laguna, and Cavite to travel to areas outside the bubble as the government seeks to restrict non-essential movements until the capital region reverts to enhanced community quarantine from 6 to, to August 20. With the enforcement of tighter boundary control, the official reminded NCR Plus residents that only medical frontliners, essential workers of select industries, government employees on official travel, and public utility vehicle operators were allowed to cross borders. Also permitted to travel to and from the bubble were duly authorized relief and humanitarian assistance actors persons going to and from the airport and cargo vessels. He said individuals who were exempted from restrictions should bring their respective identification cards, such, such as those issued by the Pandemic Task Force, regulatory agencies, and their employers as proof that they could step outside their homes. Dedicated checkpoints, Anya added, were in place for the cargo vessels that bring essential goods into Metro Manila. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez believes that Senator Pantulo Ping Lacson's move to Partido Reforma has secured his edge over other possible presidential candidates for next year's national elections given the party's grassroots of organization. In an exclusive interview with the Daily Tribune Sunday, the former top lawmaker in the House of Representatives averred that Lacson is the most qualified given his long track record in government. In preparation for the next presidential elections, Lacson officially joined Partido Reforma last Thursday and became the party's chair, replacing Alvarez, who is now the party president. <laughs> Alvarez, who is considered instrumental in the stunning upset of former Vice President Jeju Malpinay over Liberal Party stalwart Mar Rojas in the 2010 polls and later on the victory of now President Rodrigo Duterte also against Rojas, is an enigma in local politics. Among his powerful rule to command discipline at the House of Representatives was the closed-door rule in which the doors of the plenary will be closed on the roll call time of 4 p.m. and those who failed to answer the call were deemed absent. Laxon first ran for president in the 2004 general elections but lost to then-president Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. He ranked third and obtained 10.88% of the total votes. Since 2004, he has been an independent candidate. He will have Senate President Vicente Tito Soto III as his running mate. Malacanang commended boxer Ymir Marshall for securing an Olympic podium finish after beating his Armenian opponent at the Tokyo Games on Sunday. Marshall got his ticket in the, first, in the semifinals after his first-round knockout win against Armenia's Armand Darchinian in their quarterfinal bout at the Kokugikan Arena. Through his powerful right hook, coupled with stellar footwork, Marshall knocked out Darchinian with 49 seconds left in the first round. It was Marshall's second straight victory in such a fashion. The 25-year-old fighter also scored a first-round stoppage over Algeria's Yunus Nemushi in his Olympic debut on Thursday. The palace urged the nation to continue supporting 
including Marshall, who would face European champion Alexander Shizniak of Ukraine on Thursday. Hoping to secure his ticket to a possible match for a gold medal in the men's boxing middleweight division. Filipina pug Nesty Patesha is just one win away from a possible gold medal in the women's boxing featherweight class, while flyweight Carlo Paalam is three wins away. Independent research form, firm a OCTA Research Group on Sunday claimed that there may have been a community transmission of the highly contagious Delta variant in the national capital region. OCTA fellow Professor Guido David said based on the latest genome sequencing results from the Department of Health that there has been a 25% increase of the Delta variant cases. He explained that the DOH genome sequence reports do not mirror the exact number of Delta variant cases in the country due to the limited samples the agency can test. He also said based on the 25% increase of the Delta variant cases in NCR, there may have been 300 or more de Delta cases per day in the region. The infectious disease experts said cases as high as 300 cases could be equivalent to a community transmission. Last week, the DOH reported a total of 97 more case of cases of Delta variant, pushing the total number of Delta variant cases in the country to 216. News on Q will be back after these reminders. Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph, and follow us. On the road, I can expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. Now with Pulse Technology, delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. The provinces of Laguna, Aklan, and Apayao have reverted to a stricter lockdown classification due to the rising number of coronavirus infections. Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque yesterday announced the three provinces previously placed under general community quarantine were reclassified to modified enhanced community quarantine from Sunday, August 1 until August 15. Cebu Province, on the other hand, de-escalated from MECQ to GCQ with heightened restrictions for the same period. The changes followed the appeal of concerned local government units to modify the respective quarantine classifications, which were set by the National Pandemic Task Force based on their coronavirus data. President Rodrigo Duterte later approved such changes, Rocky said. Other regions and provinces in the Philippines were placed under varying levels of lockdowns. Metro Manila, which accounts for nearly 40% of the country's gross domestic product or GDP, was placed under GCQ with heightened restrictions. It would revert to the strictest lockdown classification on 6 to August 20, amidst, amidst, amid the threat of the highly contagious COVID-19 Delta variant. In other news, the Philippines reported 8,735 more cases of the coronavirus disease, bringing the country's total caseload to 1,597,689, the Department of Health said yesterday. The new recorded cases make up the country's highest daily average case since May 28. It is also the third straight day when reported cases are more than 8,000. The latest infections pushed the number of active cases in the country to 63,646, of which 94% are mild, 
1.3% are asymptomatic and 2.1% are severe, and 1.2% are in critical condition. The total number of recoveries rose to 1,506,027 after 5,930 more patients have recovered from the dreaded virus. Meanwhile, the country's COVID-19 death toll breached the 28,000 mark and now stands at 28,016 after 127 new fatalities were reported. Nationwide, 59% of intensive care unit beds are in use, another 51% of isolation beds are occupied, while 40% of mechanical ventilators are currently being utilized. In the national capital region, 51% of ICU beds are in use, 49% of isolation beds are occupied, while 39% of mechanical ventilators are utilized. Meanwhile, foreign portfolio investments, also known as hot or speculative money, posted higher net inflows for the month of May, latest data from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas said. According to the BSP, hot money yielded net inflows of three. $335 million, resulting from hefty gross inflows of $2.1 billion versus gross outflows of just $1.8 billion. Nevertheless, the latest hot money levels were slightly lower than the $417 million net inflows posted in May 2021. Gross inflows during the month reflected a 44.4% increase from the $1.5 billion listed in May 2021. Securities take bulk of capital bulk, or 91% of the inflows, were placed heavily in securities listed in the local bourse, while the remaining 9% went to peso-denominated government IOU. Top investor countries during the month include the United Kingdom, United States, Luxembourg, Singapore, and Norway, compromising 74.2% share to the overall stock. Gross outflows during the month likewise went up by 70.1%, majority of which or about 64.8% exited to the U.S. <laughs> Eviction protections expired Sunday for millions of Americans who could face homelessness within days, triggering a scramble to unlock billions in stalled rental aid and provoking blame trading in Washington. Renters had been shielded from eviction for nearly a year, as part of the government mor moratorium intended to keep people in their houses during the COVID-19 pandemic. But lawmakers have failed to extend those expiring protections and only $3 billion in aid has reached households out of the $25 billion allotted to states and localities in early February. Over a quarter of renters are behind in some states, according to the Think Tank Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. Southern states are some of the worst affected, though some 16% of, of U.S. households owed rent, about double the amount before the pandemic. The protections last, lapsed at midnight on Saturday, two days after the White House announced it would not be legally able to renew the moratorium. Republicans balked at Democratic efforts to extend the freeze through mid-October, and the House of Representatives adjourned for its summer vacation Friday without renewing it. But Democratic Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, however, laid blame on President Joe Biden's administration for waiting until the last minute to ask Congress to act, saying it could have done so weeks earlier. We will be back. Stay with us. Manong Joe po! At Ate Maita! Ngayong Hunyo, bahagyang tumaas ng 8 centavos per kilowatt hour ang overall electricity rates. Ito'y dahil sa dagdag simil sa WSM. Alam nyo ba, pwede kayong i-update ng Meralco sa text or sa email gaya ni Sarah G. Sisendan kayo ng advanced updates tulad ng upcoming bill details. Di na kayo kakabaka ba sa paghihintay ng bills? At ano mang mangyari sa bill? Masira, mabasa o mawala? No problem! To get updates, i-update ang inyong contact information sa Facebook Messenger, meralco.com.ph, email, hotline 16211 o Meralco Business Centers. Handa kami makapag-ugnayan sa inyo para makapaghatid ng mas mabuti, mabilis, at pagkinhawang servisyo. Hanggang sa susunod na Meralco Advisory!
that's it. Never thought self-service can be this slick. Modify plans in a snap. Walang hirap is a wrap. Just tap the app. Now you can check, view, subscribe, renew. Help and support for you. Out with the ring ring apps or the in thing. You know what to do. Globe at home and Globe One. All in the Globe app na yan. Self-service and easy to use. Mas okay tayo dyan. Globe at home and Globe One. All in the Globe app na yan. Instant response, no hold time pa, wala nang hintayan. Download Globe at Home and Globe One app, all in the Globe app na yan. Download the Globe One and Globe at Home apps from Google Play Store and Apple App Store now. Download Globe at Home and Globe One app, all in the Globe app na yan. For our sports news, TNT maintained its unbeaten run after surviving Phoenix 84-80 and the Philippine Basketball Association Philippine Cup at the Inaria Sports Center in Pasig City on Sunday. The Tropangiga are now up 3-0 in the standings, picking up their second consecutive win since returning from a seven-day quarantine last week. Troy Rosario flirted with a near-double-double display of 15 points and 8 rebounds, while Roger Pogoy scored 13 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 steals. Veteran playmaker Jason Castro also added 10 markers, 5 boards, and 9 assists. Matthew Wright and Jason Perkins, meanwhile, led the Fuel Masters with 15 and 14 markers apiece as Phoenix dropped to 1-4. The Philippine Astromeric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration on Monday said Southwest Monsoon will continue to affect the country. Pagasa added that Ilocos Region, Cordillera Administrative Region, Cagayan Valley, Zambales, and Bataan will have cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms, while Metro Manila and the rest of the country will be partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. Temperature will range from 27.2 degrees to 3.6 degrees Celsius. And that wraps up the stories this morning. Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. The Daily Tribune is one with the nation facing the COVID-19 crisis, and in line with this, the Daily Tribune Digital Edition on Press Reader is now available for free online. You can also download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store or Google Play to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune is also inviting everyone to join us community Viber Katribu to get updates on the freshest and hottest news and entertainment stories of the day. Tarsito emoticons are also available on our community Viber. Just visit the sticker store on Viber and search for Katribu. And before we go, we would like to thank the SM Store, the Department of Tourism, Arenata Center, and Alan Lin, Council Member, Overseas Community Affairs Council, Republic of China for their continued support. Again, this is Venice Bautista, and you're watching Tribune News on Q. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. The Daily Tribune is one with the nation in facing the COVID-19 crisis, and in line with this, the Daily Tribune Digital Edition and Press Reader is now available for free online. You can also download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS users and Google Play for Android users to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune is also inviting everyone to join its community Viper Katribu to get updates on the freshest and hottest news and entertainment stories of the day. Tarsito emoticons are also available on our community Viber. Just click on the link in this video to join. City, home to the country's first indoor shopping mall, the world's original thriller, and the first ever Beanie Beanie pageant. Now a place for your first win. 
Your first catch. Your first home. Your first big break. Your first date. And even your first love. Araneta City, the city of firsts.